Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm technically not a technician, and in today's video, I'll show you how to set up the hardware for trackball games on your Simpsons Arcade 1-Up cab. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn something cool. This video is for educational purposes only, and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any videos or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. With all of the legal mumbo jumbo out of the way, Let's look at the prerequisites of this modification that we'll not be covering in this video. In today's video, I'll be assuming that you've installed and run the patch for the ever-famous Mystery Dawson experience. This little utility is also called the Simpsons 4-Player Fix. If you've not, do not worry, as I happen to have a video covering the subject, and it will walk you through the process of setting it up and making all the needed adjustments. This video also assumes that you've installed RetroArch and configured your cab as I've done. Again, I've got a guided video tutorial showing you how to install the program and the basic setup for the home screen and APK files. It also wouldn't hurt to check out my videos on the low battery bug and the video I've got out regarding adding working buttons to your cab. These are more optional. However, both are very helpful and add a ton of function to your cab. Now, let's talk about hardware. As far as hardware, this is a very simple modification. We'll need a magical device called a 12-in-1 encoder. This magic device lets us use the trackball A stock for our Simpsons bowling game, all the while simultaneously feeding a trackball signal that the cab's OS will see as a mouse, letting us configure the mouse signal in MAME as a trackball. We'll also need a micro USB cable that can take that mouse signal from the 12-in-1 encoder and carry it to the cab's main PCB board. I'll be sure to leave affiliate links to Amazon for both of those parts for your convenience. Using the links does help support the channel, and it's a great way to know you have the right parts. Because we're on the subject of affiliate links, I do wish to digress for a second and offer up a recommendation regarding golf and an affiliate link. Have you ever smacked the shit out of a golf ball only to feel the sting and vibration of the club in your hand? If so, then you should give Shafties a try. Shafties isn't a paid sponsorship. They just have a good product. Many of you who play Golden Tee may also play real golf, and I can say this product works. If you suffer from the stinging pain caused by the vibration of your golf club, then give Shafties a try. You'll be supporting the channel, and we'll both win. We'll now return to your regularly scheduled modification tutorial. To get the 12-in-1 encoder working with the Simpsons Cabs trackball and the Control Deck's PCB, we'll need to disassemble the Control Deck and connect the three together. After taking apart the Control Deck, we'll continue our mod by disconnecting the trackball from the stock Control Deck and reconnecting it to the 12-in-1 encoder. We'll then connect the 12-in-1 encoder into the same connection on the Control X PCB that the stock trackball had occupied. All of these connections will be of the plug-in type, and you'll not need to make any soldered connection points. We'll also need to connect the 12-in-1 encoder to the main PCB board, and we'll do this using the micro USB cable that I spoke of earlier in the video. You'll also need to take your stock control deck base and drill a hole in the back of the unit for the USB cabling to exit from the control deck. I've chosen to place my hole close to the same area that the stock cabling terminates in. This should keep it out of the way and keep all the cabling in a single, unified area. Now that all of our hardware is together, we'll reinsert the control deck into our Simpsons cam and we'll screw the deck back into place. We'll then need to plug the USB cable into the Simpsons PCB board. This unit only has one USB, and I'm kind of paranoid, so I've installed an externally powered USB hub, and I'll be plugging my USB cable into my hub so that the PCB board can have access to it. If you don't have a hub, simply plug your USB cable into the single port on the PCB, and your system should get a signal from the 12-in-1 encoder. Now let's move on to the ever-confusing subject of arcade MAME ROMs, and let's talk about what we've downloaded, how we've managed those ROMs, and how we whittled our selection of ROMs down to not only match our cab's controls, but to also ensure we have the regions we prefer. 
For the trackball mod, I wanted to first try Retro Arch's current main core, as this should give me access to the most current list of trackball arcade games. I do believe that the MAME 2003 core or one of the other arcade cores may play some of the selected games better as those cores have been optimized for gaming versus accurate emulation. However, I'm going to start with the current build of MAME, and as of making this video, that version is build 0.260. I don't wish to get very deep into how to automate downloading the newest ROM set, but I do happen to have a video regarding the subject and I'll make sure that I link to it in the description if you'd like to check it out. Most sets you'll find in the wild are what's called a merge set. This simply means that the ROMs have all been compressed in such a way that saves space and lets MAME access them. However, if you want your ROMs set to be a one ROM to one game set, you'll have to take your newly downloaded merge set and rebuild it into a non-merged set. This was a pain in the ass for me to learn how to do for the first time. However, you're in luck. I also have a video showing you how to rebuild your merge set into a non-merge set, and I'll again be linking to that in the description. Another thing that has always been a major issue for me in the past is ROM selection. It takes a very long time to try and pick which ROMs use the same controls as the cab I'm working on. To automate this, I've got another trick, and it's awesome. Again, I'll leave a link showing you how I've done this. The important thing to take away from this is that the set you download will need to be rebuilt to a non-merged set, and then you'll need to remove any game that MAME isn't able to emulate well and any game that isn't a trackball game. As far as removing unwanted games from your set, if used right, the arcade database trick is great at making sure that the ROMs you're left with are games that match the controls of the cab that you're using. However, you'll still need to verify that you have all the CHUD and BIOS files that are needed for each of the ROMs. I wish I had a great time saving trick for this, but sadly I do not. To verify that I've got all the CHUD files and all the BIOS files I need, I simply start each game one by one in MAME. And if there are files missing from the ROM, MAME informs me of what I'm missing. And after a quick Google search and download, I add those files to the MAME ROM folder and test the game continuing the process until each game loads. The last thing I did was pick regions. For me, as I'm from the good old US of A, I picked North America as my preferred region. Then the world. Europe is next. And last is whatever region is left if a preferred region isn't available. You can also choose to keep or remove hacks from arcade games, as some have been sped up to make them harder. But this is all up to you. Now that you've downloaded your ROMs, rebuilt them to a non-merged set, selected the version of each ROM that you want, and verified that you have all of your CHUD and BIOS files, it's time to copy over those files to your Simpsons Arcade 1-Up cab. Is this why I was created? Am I only a cheap Max 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 Headroom knockoff? Is there nothing more than this cheap existence? These answers and more, but only to those that subscribe. To transfer the trackball ROMs over to the cab, I'll do the same as I've done in this past video on the subject. Again, I'm assuming that you've modded your cab in the same way, and I'll not be giving detailed instructions on moving your ROMs around in this video. Just be sure to check out the original. That said, after transferring your ROMs, you'll also need to enable the trackball so that MAME knows to use it. To learn how to do this, I simply googled the term, enabling a trackball in RetroArch. At the time of making this video, doing so will bring you to a Reddit post about how to do such a task. I don't wish to bore you with all the details, so I'll get to the heart of it. Reddit user bboy486 tells us that we'll need to make a config file called retroart-core-options.cfg, and in this file we'll need to have one line of code. MAME underscore mouse underscore enable space equals space quotations enable, and lastly quotations. To make my file, I simply use Notepad++ to make my config file, and when done, I simply transferred my new config file to the internal storage under RetroArch, then the config folder. Then I added a new folder called doll and pasted the new config file there. We'll also need to tell RetroArch that it will need to load this newly added configuration file, and to do this, we'll need to enter RetroArch. Once RetroArch is started, Head to the settings section, navigate to the configuration area, and enter that section. Once you're in the configuration section, 
Navigate down to the section called Use Global Core Options File and enable that option. After this is done, the current main core that we've installed will have access to the trackball. Now that we're done setting up the hardware and giving the current main core access to the trackball, we'll need to start one of the arcade ROMs and make any adjustments that are needed. I figure, why not Golden Tea? As this game seems to be of interest to many in our community, I've discovered on my cab that I do need to adjust the trackball controls for each ROM. And to do so, you'll need to connect a keyboard and press the tab key. When this is done, the main menu will present itself and give you direct access to the arcade ROM controls. Once in the main menu, you'll need to use the enter and arrow keys on the keyboard to navigate to and select the first option called input settings. And once in the input options section, you'll need to navigate down one more option to the area listed as analog input adjustments. Here you'll find an area that lets you adjust the sensitivity to both the X and Y axes of the trackball. Before filming, I did play with the controls to verify that I had everything correct, so if my settings on screen are different from yours, do not be alarmed. Each ROM will need to be adjusted, and each ROM is for a different machine, so no two will be the same. However, you will find all of the controls for the arcade cab you have loaded in this main menu. I have found that each cab needs the sensitivity of the trackball raised for the games to be playable. I am sad to say I was unable to get Marble Madness to be playable. I'm not sure if it's the core I'm using or if it's the trackball itself, but I will say that in emulation, it is very obvious that the trackball could be improved, and I may need to upgrade the stock ball in the near future. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on a trackball upgrade. A few games like Millipede were played with very little editing of the controls, and you can use the main controls to configure your games as you wish. I not only adjust the sensitivity of the trackball, but I also have the option to change what button I want to use as the fire key. However, we'll not be doing a full configuration of MAME for this video. Rambo is another game that plays well on this cap. However, you will need to use the MAME menu to change the cap from an 8-way joystick to a trackball. In truth, I play around with setting for each cab and do my best to get the game play right. I also hate to tell you that not all of the games I wanted to play ran well on this MAME's current RetroArch core. I'm not sure what other cores will play these golf games, but I'll have to see what I can find. As Golden T97 or higher just ran like total crap. In conclusion, adding a stock trackball integration to your soft modded cab is very easy to do with very little hardware. The stock track ball is lacking, but it will work and should be fine on older games as long as you're not too picky. Also, I don't believe you can take the cursor off the screen. I was unable to. If you can figure that out, let the community know. Again, I do want to thank you for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please remember to like and comment on this video, and it would be very awesome if you shared this video with a friend. If you've not done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. All of these are small clicks of the mouse for you, but to this small channel, those little clicks mean the world. Thank you.